All right, let's all stand. Welcome to Jersey Shore Baptist Church. 285, we're going to start it off with leaning on the everlasting arms. Lord, to come to church, Lord, to worship you and praise you, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that we'll have a great time tonight. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're going to do our congregational picks at this time. If you have maybe a favorite hymn that you would like to sing, uh, you can go ahead and raise your hand and give me that number, and we'll, we'll write it down. I think on the band list is number 20 and number 3, as far as I know. Um, we love those songs, so we want to keep them precious. Yes? Come and dine. Come and dine. Which number is that? 183. There was somebody missed all? Holy, holy, holy. We got our encyclopedia over there. Yeah, go ahead. What is it? 145. I think I saw another hand over here. No? Go ahead, Brother Bell. Amazing Grace, number three. <laughs> is that it? If you want to, that's perfectly fine by me. Whatever you want. All right. All right, we'll move on. We got our song picks. We're going to go to number 291, My Lord Knows the Way. Now, before we sing this one, we're going to be doing a clap, okay? We're kind of trying to um, do things just a little bit differently for fun, basically. Um, and so it's going to be, My Lord Knows the Way through the wilderness. All I have to do is clap, follow. So we're going to do it one time through for everybody, and then... We'll let you all join in and we'll go through it twice, okay? So let's go through it up here first.
but let's all sing it together. We'll go through it twice. Here we go. So if you're interested in enrolling your children into Jersey Shore Baptist Academy, we're going to be, Sammy, if you have any questions about it, you can see Sammy or Justin, but that'll be tomorrow night here at the church at 6.30 p.m. Monday night. A reminder to sign up for our services on our website, jerseyshorebaptist.com, and you can register for um, whichever um, Sunday morning service you'd like to attend, 
and then also register for the Sunday evening and Wednesday night service. That way we can prepare for whoever's going to be here um, for those services. And that's, you can find that information on our website. The noon Zoom prayer meeting, we're still having that. That's Monday through Saturday at 12 o'clock, and that's through Zoom and Facebook Live. If you want to join via Zoom, you can reach out to Sammy or Pastor, and we'll make sure that you get a link to the Zoom, in, to the Zoom invite, and then, uh, or you can join through Facebook Live. And then Blood Drive, August 10th and 20th, we added those two recently to um, our Blood Drives here, and then all, we have the September 3rd Blood Drive, and that, those are all here at the church. Please consider giving blood. We're currently facing a nationwide shortage of blood, and you can do your part in helping someone in need. To register, go to redcrossblood.org, and you can uh, look up the name of the church or the zip code here, and then register for an appointment for any of those dates on there. And then for those that are watching at home, you can give online through our website, jerseyshorebaptist.com. We have the information there on different ways that you can give. And just a reminder, we also have the um, offering box in the back of the church there by the map. We're just going to take some time to uh, thank the Lord and praise Him for meeting the needs of the church. Lord, we thank you, God, for tonight. Lord, we thank you that we can have church, Lord. And God, it's just a blessing to be in your house. God, just a blessing to hear your people sing to you. And God, I just pray, Lord, that we wouldn't take it for granted, Lord, and pray that we would cherish these times together. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just be with the preaching of your word, Lord. I pray, God, that you would um, edify the believer, Lord. I pray, God, that if someone's not saved here um, this uh, evening, that they would get saved tonight, Lord. And I pray, God, that you would just be with everything that goes on, Lord. May it uplift and glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, for who you are, Lord, and for how much you mean to us. And I pray, God, that you would just, uh, just continue to bless the church, Lord, and provide for the church and use your people to do so. God, we love you. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen.
great song, awesome. What was the next number? Was it uh, 183, 183?
Let's do verse 3. Can't skip it. Can't skip it. Verse 3. It is well with my soul. Verse 3, talking about your sin. Think about it. What he did for you. My sin, oh God, is not his
We're not going to play another song, but I'm going to ask you to give a, a hymn testimony. You know, we were talking uh, or singing about, um, you know, sorrow. We, you know, in that song by Ron Hamilton, uh, talking about being tried and coming out as gold. Um, that's going through the difficult days. And, um, and then we sang it as well, and there's a lot of sorrow in that. And, of course, you know, the whole story behind the hymn. There's a lot of sorrow in that, and uh, the guy who wrote the hymn, Horatio Spafford, I'm going to ask Miss Camillo, I'm sure you have that one down pretty well. Give us the, give us the story behind Horatio Spafford, and then the guy who wrote the music, mm -hmm. Philip Bliss, if, tell how, do you remember how he died? Mm -hmm. Tell that story also. I don't remember the years, okay, but we're going back um, with Horatio Spafford, it was the great Chicago fire. I don't know, when I was in grade school, we used to sing the song about uh, something O'Leary knocked the the oil lamp over in the barn and it set the fire. And that, that apparently was the great Chicago fire and that was that song. I don't think we should have sung about it, but um, he was a, a pretty wealthy businessman and he had his business and he lost it all in the great Chicago fire. So he decided to send his wife and his daughters over to England. Well, I guess he tried to put all his business in order. Um, and he received a telegram, telegraph, whatever it was back then and said, all it said was, saved alone by his wife. So he immediately got on a ship and headed to England, and one night going over the Atlantic, he couldn't sleep, so he got up and was pacing around the ship, and he started talking to the captain, and the captain said, we are going over the place where your daughters were killed, because their ship had collided with another ship in the mid-Atlantic, and all, I think it was three daughters were killed all of his children. Um, and he went back to his room that night and he wrote the words, to it is well with my soul. It is well. Uh, he proceeded to go to England um, and he had, a, you know, he knew several people that wrote music and he asked Philip Bliss, who uh, wrote a lot of music, but also sang a lot with D.L. Moody in the revivals and asked him to put his words to music, which Philip Bliss did. So, um, it was introduced in the United States at a D.L. Moody uh, revival, and Philip Bliss and his wife were traveling to another area of the country, I believe it was either that night or very soon after, and they were on train and they were crossing the Ohio River, and the bridge collapsed, and the train went, and it was winter, and the waters were all ice. And there are different accounts on this, um, the one that I seem to read the most was that his wife was caught in the wreckage and he couldn't get her out and he stayed with her and they drowned together. So um, I guess, you know, when he wrote the music to it, he had never idea that those words become so meaningful if we look back. And then over Joyce in the Lord is Ron Hamilton, who some know as Patch the Pirate. And um, a few years ago, his son committed suicide. Um, he also, earlier, he wrote this hymn after he went blind in one eye and had surgery, and he always wore a patch over his eye, so that's how he got the name Patch the Pirate. He and his wife, Shelly Hamilton, wrote numerous um, CDs, music books, songs for kids, like I Love Broccoli and Obedience and all these. Um, and I recently just read that he has dementia, and it is so bad that he does not know his wife anymore. She cares for him 24-7, and about a month ago I read how she finally got some help in to give her a couple hours a week, but that even with all his dementia, he still has a sense of humor, and he's not one of those angry patients. He's still happy, and so she rejoices that he's like that and he doesn't give her a hard time. But um, even in that story, you know, his life was full of heartache. All right. You know, this week, because we're going through Ecclesiastes, I've been reading the book of Ecclesiastes. Yesterday, I was, I was sitting down at the beach of all places, and I was just listening to the book of Ecclesiastes. I, I, I read it through or listened to it through like four times. And that, that's why, by the way, I got fried, because I sat through it in the sun, reading, listening to the book. And this verse kept catching me, uh, catching my attention. It's verse 3 of chapter 7, but in, in verse 2, said it is better go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting for that is the end of all men and the living will lay it to his heart then it says sorrow is better than laughter for by the sadness of the countenance the heart is made better 
Now, we don't like that. Uh, we would like to be in the house of laughter all the time. We would like to go through um, just, you know, top side, the mountaintops. That's what we would like to have in our lives. But God knows that we need sorrow in life to make our hearts better. And so, uh, anyway, I just was thinking about that. Now, we're going to take a couple testimonies. And uh, first of all, I want to rebuke our whole crew up here. There, there was clapping in church, which is not allowed. <clears throat> also, uh, they, they sang a song that was not in the hymn book. And I checked the hymn book. I checked the, the internet to see. I said, the only way Miss Camilla would authorize a, a song that's not in the hymn book, it's got to be at least 300 years old. And it sounded like it may have been 300 years old, but it's not. It's, it's a Getty hymn. And so, but if Miss uh, Camillo authorized it to go through, that means it's good, the music's good, the lyrics are good, and all that. So praise the Lord for that. Uh, but anyway, so there's all kinds of stuff going on. There was a whole crew of people raising their hand over here, and nobody asked a question, so I don't know why you're raising, <laughs> raising If we were to ask a question, nobody would raise their hand. So that's got to stop. I mean, just you got to quit all that stuff out. People are going to start thinking you're, you know, holy rollers or something. I'm just teasing. But anyway, praise the Lord. It was a great song service tonight. So awesome. All right. Now, does anybody else have a testimony, something you want to praise the Lord about? Go ahead, Brother Bill. They can hear you on Facebook better with the mic. Okay. Something that it seemed like the devil was working on me. I'd like to say, oh, you don't have to go to church uh, tonight. You can stay home and whatever. So I laid on the couch, watched the TV a little bit. I said, I got to get up and get out of here. So here I am. Amen. We're well, glad you're here. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? By the way, it's good to have the Olive family, the extended Olive families here. Sure. We've been praying for your sister, Joyce. And uh, we pray for Joyce every day. And so we're praying that uh, God brings her through that. I know she's been a great testimony throughout the whole thing. I've heard a lot of stuff from Amanda about it. Yes. I just wanted to praise the Lord that I got to see Brother G tonight. Amen. I'm thankful for my family. Amen. Anybody else? Go ahead, Camille. Camille, go first. Yeah, I'd like to praise the Lord for the music ministry, uh, all the people that are involved, the orchestra and everything. I'd also like to praise the Lord, too, what you had said about the congregational singing. Um, I don't know if you noticed or not, but I did. I mean, everybody was just like full force singing, and it was so good because um, not too long ago when we were sitting in here, <laughs> yeah, there was nobody, nobody here. Nobody yeah. in here. <clears throat> and when I say the place was dead it was because the people weren't here not because of you know not good preaching or anything like that it was because there were no kids running around there were no people here singing like that and it was just awesome tonight Amen. and i love when people raise their hands because i'm back here screaming too so Amen. Um, women are to keep silence in the churches mrs stall <laughs> hey is that is that law here there, there is another returning visitor, Miss Mr. Law. He, um, he, it's been, he hasn't been here since COVID, right? Since, since we were, yeah, so amen. It's good to see him. Hey, congratulations, Law. You got a new little brother, huh? Jacob Connor. Go ahead, James. I just want to thank God for family and thank him for uh, newborn baby and wife being healthy and strong and uh, Law just being a good big brother. Amen. Who else? Go ahead, John. I would just like to praise the Lord along the lines of um, Ms. Stahl's testimony. Just, I, I praise the Lord for the family of God, for the church. Um, and, you know, we've talked about it multiple times about how we don't realize, you know, what something means to us until it's gone and causes us to appreciate it a little bit more. Um, but it's awesome to be able to praise God. And, and you know, everybody's got different backgrounds. N nobody here is the same. But, yeah, we have one thing in common. And that is just so awesome to see everybody coming together and just praising God. for the, And it's awesome to hear everybody's stories, too, Amen. of what God did in their life. And it is just awesome to be part of the family. So I praise God for that. Amen. Anybody else? Yep, Miss Camille over here. 
We got, we got both the microphones over here on the left side. I know, they are. No, it's not. They are, they are a little bit dead over there. On, on the flip side of music, um, when I'm playing, I try to play the words, and I follow the words. But when I hear everybody sing, and sing from their heart, how much it encourages me. Amen. So sometimes I play, and it's just wow. Amen. And when I hear everybody sing, it just, it lifts me up. I just think how much we need to praise God, and we should be singing with the children singing. Yeah, amen. Amen, that's good. Go ahead. I'm thankful that um, for church. Amen. Her name is Ellie Belly, by the way, not Eliana. She tries to get away with that Eliana thing, but it's Ellie Belly. Anybody else? Oh, we got one more up here. I just want to praise the Lord that uh, for family as well. Uh, my in-laws coming out, of course. Uh, love seeing them here at our church. And uh, my husband being here twice in one day, which is... He uh, said twice today. It's nice to see you. Just, <laughs> twice. You know, uh, last year at this time, I think about what, uh, what my uh, family was going through. And I'm just so thankful that he's pulled us through so much and... Uh, that we've all grown in that valley, and I'm just so thankful that, that, that we can all be here. Amen. And, and of course, we praise the Lord that Mr. Led Zeppelin down there is getting baptized tonight. All right, there, buddy? Yeah. Yes, sir. I, I want to thank God along the lines of what they were saying um, about um, just the spirit here tonight, and always really here, but. Uh, like Ms. Dahl was saying a couple months ago, the place was empty, just a couple people in the back, we were singing, and, and I, I know God was here, and I know he was into preaching and all that stuff, but um, just sitting in the back, listening to everybody sing, and then singing the different songs that we were singing, and um, the Bible says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in the midst, and you could definitely feel like the Holy Spirit's right here with us, and that he's definitely moving in our congregation, and it's just so good to be able to be back in church, be, have people come, and uh, be singing, all that stuff. Um, so I thank God for that, and I also thank God for uh, my Sunday school class for going through um, Transforming Truths is the book we're going through, and um, this, this, it's supposed to be a week-by-week -week lesson, but I can never get through one week, uh, one lesson in one week. It usually takes three or four weeks for me to get through it, um, but we're going through, um, like, the, the greatest promise of uh, God being with us through, train, uh, through um, testings and trials and uh, temptations, and it's just a good reminder and I just thank God for what he's reminded me that uh, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what anybody's going through, um, first of all, it's not uncommon. It's, there's a lot of people going through the same, the same tri trials, same testing. Um, but he's there to help us get through it. And right. He's there to make us better. The testing isn't to hurt us. It's to make us a stronger Christian, make us a better person. And um, I just thank God for constantly reminding me uh, that what I'm going through, he's right there with me and he's just trying to grow me. Amen. I praise the Lord for uh, your wife, who's outside right now with Asher, and you guys are going to do the switch thing, right? So we're going to try to get a nursery up and running here soon uh, on Sunday evening. We have it at 11, but we don't have it at Sunday evening yet, so we will soon, though. Go ahead, Sofifi. I'm, I'm thankful for the church. Amen. Anybody else? All right, we are going to go to, oh, let me give you one from uh, Facebook here, Joshua Thomas. Um, praises the Lord for his and mandolin. I don't know who mandolin is. Mr. Wade, is a mandolin somebody related to Joshua Thomas? His sister. His sister. Their graduation went well, so he praises the Lord for that. You know, talking about the live feed, I thank the Lord for the live feed and, you know, all of that and the technology. It's all awesome. However, you know, like a song service like we just had, it, it's not the same on a live stream. There's just no way. And that's why you need to be in church. And, and you know, let me, let me stress this. Sometimes, as Brother uh, Bill just said, sometimes, you know, you, you just want to stay home. And, you know, your flesh wants to stay home. The devil wants you to stay home. And, uh, but, it's, it's, again, it's not the same um, sitting in your pajamas watching the live feed as it is being with other people in the house of the Lord together. Iron sharpening iron, and we're edifying and lift up, encouraging, admonishing sometimes each other 
We need that. And it's not so, so much about, some people say, well, I can, I can get the word at home just like I can get it at church. That's true. The message itself, the Bible, you can get all that at home. But it's us lifting up, encouraging each other. It's, it's you coming in and having the opportunity to encourage somebody else. That's, that's a blessing. And like Miss Camilla said, it's an encouragement to us when everybody's here and they're singing and, you know, the spirit is here and it just helps the service go so much better. And so, anyway, praise the Lord, it was a great service so far. Uh, anyway, we're going to be in 2 Samuel chapter 19. Now, here's what we're going to do. We have baptism tonight, and so I'm going to cut it off at 10 after 6, okay? Uh, so, so we're, we're going verse by verse. This is not unlike, you know, this morning it was a topical message here. Uh, we're going through the Bible. So if we don't get the whole chapter done as is our custom, the Bible says, uh, we will we'll stop wherever we stop, and we'll continue on next week. And so, and then we'll do the baptism, and, um, and so that's what we'll do. So I don't want anybody to get nervous, because you're looking at this chapter saying, he usually does the whole chapter, and it's, what, 44, 43 verses long, and uh, the way he preaches, we'll be here for two hours, and we won't. We'll get out at 610. So anyway, we've been studying uh, in 2 Samuel the rebellion of Absalom, and we're not going to get into great detail uh, about it. We kind of, every time we went through each chapter dealing with the rebellion of Absalom, we went into, we kind of reviewed the entire thing. But we, those, uh, the events regarding the rebellion of Absalom take place between 2 Samuel 13 and 18. It really all began with David's sin with Bathsheba, and then when David also murdered Bathsheba's husband, Uriah the Hittite. According to the law, David was worthy of death not only for the adultery, but also for, for murder. And, or I should say, not only for the murder, but for the adultery. They were both offenses that were worthy of death according to the law. But God spared David's life. However, it may have been better, if you think about it, if David had actually died. I mean, as far as the personal consequences of the whole thing. Because David, though David lived, um, there were a, a lot of problems within his family and within the nation of Israel that resulted um, from this sin. The consequences were more serious than just the death of one man. And, uh, you know, Nathan told David, as a matter of fact, uh, I'll, I'll look back at 2 Samuel chapter 12 and just read a couple of verses there. The consequences of David's sin were given by Nathan. Well, actually... To be honest with you, David pronounced his own consequences. And I, I'll read the, the little allegory given to him by Nathan. When David get, got caught, the Bible says at the end of chapter 11, the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. In chapter 12 it says, And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb. And one little ewe lamb was was Bathsheba, that represented Bathsheba, Uriah and Bathsheba, which he had bought and nourished up, and, and it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a, traveling, a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. So he took this, instead of taking one of his own, he had many, he took one from somebody else. And obviously this is all a picture, an allegory to get David to think about what he did. David has no clue where Nathan is going with this. But he took the poor man's lamb, dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. Now notice this, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. We shared last week, fourfold, David pronounced his own sentence because not only did his child die, the child that was the result of the union between him and Bathsheba, the child died, but he also, Abner died, that, that came as a result of this thing. Amnon died, and now Absalom, when we get to chapter 18, Absalom is dead as well. And it's a fourfold price that was paid as a result of that. And so it goes on to say, and Nathan said to David, thou art the man. In other words, I'm talking about you, David. 
Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul, and I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house. Here's consequences. Consequences of David's sin. The sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me, and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, Amnon, Absalom, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor, for he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son, for thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before Israel and before the son. And then notice it says, David finally owns up to it. He doesn't own up to it till he gets caught, though. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And notice, Nathan said to David, the Lord hath put away thy sin. Notice this, thou shalt not die. How be it by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. Maybe the punishment... David, having rethought this thing in hindsight here in chapter 19, looking back as he's mourning the death of Absalom, he already mourned the death of Amnon. 20,000 soldiers died from Israel in this battle, all resulting from this thing. Maybe David in hindsight wishes he was the one that died as a result of his own sin. But because of his sin, many, many other people's lives were effective, were affected. And so, you know, just a practical point in this, think before you act. You won't get away with your sin. The Bible's very clear. Your sin will find you out. And uh, your sin will likely neg negatively affect more people than just you. Your sin affects you for sure, but it also affects the people around you. And so just think. If, you know, if we would just pause for, for five minutes before we act, before we speak, we could probably avoid so much heartache in our lives and, and, and avoid so much heartache for other people. Now, here in chapter 19, the battle's over. Absalom has been defeated. He's been killed against David's will. David wanted him taken alive. But Joab killed him. And um, now David is returning to the city of Jerusalem as the conquering hero. And uh, Absalom has been killed. His army has surrendered. And uh, David is now coming back victorious. However, he's, it's a bittersweet victory because the defeated enemy was not some person afar off of a di different nation. It was his own son. And deep down, David knows. And by the way, the men that fought for David were his own men. And um, David knows deep down that all of these problems, all this whole war that broke out was all a result ultimately of his own sin. And so uh, it's really a tragic story. And uh, by the way, uh, in this passage of scripture as David comes back to Jerusalem, and I, obviously when we talk about pictures and types, there's never a perfect picture. There's so many pictures in the Bible. But David returning to the city of Jerusalem is, is, is kind of a picture of Christ uh, Christ is, is in heaven now, but he's going to return. He's going to rule and reign from Jerusalem on the earth, but it's not going to happen until all rebellion is put down. And so the rebellion on earth will all be put down, and then Christ will return. Of course, he's, gonna, he's the one that's going to put it down himself. All right, so let's look at verses 1 through 8. I better get my glasses on or I'll never be able to read this. Um, and we see here the rebuke from Joab. So, so David is is not happy at all about what happened, and it's visible on his, his expression. I want you to think about the men that just fought, bled, many of them died. Many of their friends died. And they see David mourning. Now, you would think he'd be mourning because their, their, their army lost. But their army didn't lose, their army won. But yet David is mourning, and this causes a big problem. Joab, the general, he's the practical guy. He's not happy about this at all. 
So let's read these first eight verses. And it was told Joab, Behold, the king weepeth and mourneth for Absalom. And the victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people. For the people heard say that day how the king was grieved for his son. And notice this, and the people get them by stealth that day into the city. So David's at May and Am, over there on the eastern side of the Jordan River. And his soldiers who just won a great battle for him, they're sneaking into the city because the king's not happy. They feel like they've done something wrong. Did you ever do right? No, you did right. But even the doing of right causes sometimes you fe to feel like you did wrong. Like, for instance, um, you know, you know something about somebody and perhaps the best thing, the right thing to do would be to go and tell somebody else about it for their benefit, for not, not because you're tattletaling, but because you want to help them. And, but yet, even though you did right, you did what God would want you to do, it still feels like you did something wrong. Because, you know, in, in this case, David is, is mourning. He's upset. And um, the people got them by stealth that day in the city. They snuck in as people being ashamed steal away when they flee in battle. But the king covered his face. And the king cried with a loud voice, Oh, my son Absalom. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Let me ask you the question. Do you think the people of Israel that fought for David felt the same way about Absalom that he did? No, he was enemy number one. He was the bad guy. We killed him. He's gone. But David didn't feel that way. And I get both sides of it. I get David's side. He's a father. He's grieving over his son. But I also get the other side of it. Absalom was a traitor. Absalom's rebellion resulted in the deaths of thousands of our men, good men, families, fathers of children, husbands of wives. I'm not mourning for this guy like you're going to mourn for this guy. Notice what Joab does. And Joab came into the house to the king and said, Thou hast shamed this day the faces of all thy servants, which this day have saved thy life, and the lives of thy sons and of thy daughters, and the lives of thy wives, and the lives of thy concubines, in that, notice this, thou lovest thine enemies and hatest thy friends. Watch this. For thou hast declared this day that thou regardest neither princes nor servants. For this day I perceive, in other words, Joab says, you know what I think, David? I think if, that if Absalom had lived, and all we had died this day, that it would have pleased thee well. You would have been happier had all of us died and your son Absalom lived. You would have been happier about that. Um, now, therefore, arise, go forth, and speak comfort. He's ordering the king. Notice this. And by the way, think about this. We studied already that this, the order in, in Samuel is not the chronological order. All the events surrounding Absalom are kind of like lumped together in one section. We're going to see in a couple of chapters how that the people of Israel are going to tell David, you no longer go to war with us. You're not going to fight for us. Actually, though, that happened a long time before this battle. So now David, during this time period, is not the guy leading the army. So who do you think the army is going to be loyal to? Are they going to be loyal to David, who is now leading from a city inside the safety of Maenaim? Or are they going to be loyal to the guy that's leading them in the battle, fighting, them in the, fighting with them in the trenches, like Joab and his brother Abishai? So Joab probably at this point has the loyalty of the army, and he's confident enough and he's upset enough to start ordering around David and telling David what he's going to do. He said, um, he said, Now therefore arise, go forth, and speak comfortably unto thy servants. For I swear by the Lord, if thou go not forth, there will not tarry. Notice this, he says, one with thee this night. Now, he's one, right? So he's saying, look, David, I promise you, if you don't do this, I am not going to be with you anymore. These men won't be with you, but they're not going to be with you because I am going to lead them away from you. And I, I honestly think that's what his full intentions might have been. Uh, he was um, definitely an interesting man, Joab. He had some strong points. He certainly was a warrior. He was a fighter. Uh, he stood 
against David's numbering the people, which was a good thing. He recognized that God would give them the victory no matter how, uh, how much they were outnumbered. Uh, so he had some good things about him, but he was definitely an ambitious man. And there were definitely some times he went completely against the orders of the king. The king didn't want Abner dead, but Joab killed him. The king didn't want Absalom dead. Matter of fact, he ordered, he said, you know, bring the young man back alive. And yet, Joab killed him. And, um, and so he, he definitely was a, a strong-willed guy. So he said, uh, there will not tarry one with thee this night, and that will be worse unto thee than all the evil that befell thee from thy youth until now. See, you think Absalom's rebellion was bad, David? It's going to be worse for you if you don't get this right with your people. Then the king arose and sat in the gate, and they told unto all the people, saying, Behold, the king doth sit in the gate. And all the people came before the king. Notice this. For Israel had fled every man to his tent. By the way, when that Bible uses that expression, they fled to their tents, it meant that they were preparing for battle. In other words, David, if you're not, if you're not going to be our king, if you're not going to rejoice with us over this great victory, we're preparing now another rebellion. This time it's going to be against you not against your son Absalom. And so uh, it's a very, very strong rebuke given here by Joab. And um, so David's men had just fought. Many of them died in order to get the kingdom back from David. The men had won a great victory, but their victory felt more like defeat because the way David was grieving. Um, his men entered like a defeated army instead of those that had just won a glorious victory. By the way, let me say this, we're living in a time when the doing of right is condemned instead of rewarded. You know, the Bible says very clearly in the book of Isaiah, and Isaiah is a prophetic book, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And you know, as well as I do, you turn on the news these days, and it's all about people doing whatever they want to do, acting lawlessly, and they're being praised and rewarded even, Whereas people who try to stand for the truth are being condemned. Um, you know, the day is coming very soon, and really now is, when people who stand for God and the, and the principles found in the Word of God are going to be condemned uh, for what we stand for. We'll be, we'll be called bigots because we stand against homosexuality. Uh, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be called sowers of hatred and will be called, you know, to be, uh, you're narrow-minded, and all these different things will be labeled. And that day is rapidly approaching. I promise you, the ultimate end of the game that's going on in our country today is not uh, right against the left or, or you know, we're, we're against this particular group or that particular group. No, ultimately, the enemy is God and anybody that stands for God, and it's all kind of funneling down to that and very soon, the, the enemy is going to be clearly labeled, it's God, it's God's people. They're the enemies. And uh, it's going to be a rough place to live in, in a few years. I hope the Lord uh, comes back before it gets too bad. But the bottom line is, is we're not guaranteed, as our forefathers weren't guaranteed, that there's going to be time of persecution for us as well. So uh, anyway, the doing of right. These men did right, and yet they were condemned. They, were, they, they felt as if they had done wrong. And uh, Joab, he's the practical one in David's cabinet. He looks past the emotion, and he understands that the grief at, uh, David's grief at the loss of his rebellious son could cause David's men to rebel against him. And Joab's, Joab's rebuke, it was really a threat because he stated that everybody, including him, would turn against him if he, if he did not honor these brave men. You know, Wearsby said this, and this is a great statement. He said, leaders must still lead, even if their hearts are broken. That's one of the prices that leaders must pay. You, you can't bog down. You know, the Bible says if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. You can't do it. You have to, you have to stay strong if you're a leader. And, um, and uh, unfortunately, it's not easy to do, and sometimes you don't know whether you can stand the test until it's tested. By the way, that's why when God puts you in a leadership position, that will often be tested. 
And there'll be little tests along the way as you rise up in leadership. There'll be little tests. And if you've passed those tests, God strengthens you through those trials and, and builds you up as you go. But leaders must still lead even if their hearts are broken. You know, every dad, uh, the rest of the family could be collapsing, but dad has to be strong. And he has to make sound decisions for his family. And so uh, it, leadership's not fun sometimes. So David had to put his feelings aside. He had to put on a brave front. You say, well, that's hypocritical. Well, sometimes you don't always reveal everything that's going on inside of you. We're not that transparent. And so sometimes you have to put your feelings aside, put on a brave front. And David had to uh, uh, celebrate the great victory that his men fought and died for to give him. And by the way, him sitting in the gate, that phrase, sitting in the gate, you know, you if you look at the Bible for the first time, you say, what's the thing about the gate? Well, who cares about a gate? Well, the gate of the city is where the leaders were. Moses judged in the gate, and you know, Lot was in the gate, and different leaders were in the gate. In the, in the book of Ruth, you have uh, the transaction going on, Boaz and his, his, his near of kin relative. It took place in the gate. And so David being in the gate meant that he was back on the throne. He was leading. He was doing what he was supposed to be doing. He was, he was returning to his duties as a king. All right. Well, look, it's, I got one minute till 10 after, so I'm not going to rush into this and, uh, and, and what do you call it? I'm not going to rush into this and just try to, you know, speed speak through the rest of the, uh, the rest of the next section. So we're going to stop there, but, uh, we're going to have a baptism and so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask, uh, somebody's got to get, Justin, you're going to have to get uh, Mr. Led Zeppelin there ready for, his name is Zeppelin, by the way, for those of you who don't know him. I just call him Led Zeppelin because I wasn't born on the preacher's back porch. Some of you don't know who Led Zeppelin is, and that's good. Uh, me, unfortunately, I, I know all too well who Led Zeppelin, uh, who the group Led Zeppelin is. It's not a him, it's a, it's a they. Uh, anyway, but uh, go ahead, Zepp, go get ready. Well, you can go out there with them if you want. It's, it's fine. I mean, you guys can go over there by the baptistry. And uh, we're going to pray. And then um, Wade's going to lead us in a couple of hymns. Just sing something. Try to make it as good as that, that song service we had a little while ago. I mean, let's ask that God would do that. But let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you, God, uh, for the little bit of word that we just had. But God, it was a great service. Sometimes we don't even have preaching because we do a lot of singing and testimonies and and lord those are good times as well but we're thankful for your word and we'll, we'll get through the rest of this chapter next week and i'm thankful god that zeppelin is getting baptized i'm thankful for his salvation i'm thankful for his family god and right on up the grandparents and just a lot of people invested in his life and have uh, i mean children that they don't just happen by accident they there's a lot of love and a lot of uh, instruction and a lot of good things, ingredients that go into um, a child's life. And Zeppelin is a great kid. And I'm thankful that he got saved. I'm thankful that you saved him, God. And I pray, God, that you'd bless him now as he's following you in believer's baptism. And uh, God, taking that step of obedience because he wants to be submissive to your will. And we're thankful for that. God, I pray you just bless, Lord. I pray you bless what we studied, the, the brief little eight verses we studied in the scriptures tonight. Give us some things to think about from that passage of scripture. And God, we love you. We pray you bless the rest of the night, for it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to take our hymn books, or you don't have hymn books. We're going to look up the screens, page number 57 at Calvary.
Hobson, David, believed were baptized. On the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And uh, you can only be baptized if you believe. In, in um, Acts chapter, what was it? Acts chapter 8, the, the uh, Ethiopian eunuch, if thou believe with all your heart, you may. The Ethiopian eunuch said, see, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? He said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. That's the condition for baptism. Praise the Lord for Zeppelin. I praise the Lord for uh, Will and the whole family, and we're excited about that. All right, Zeppelin, have you received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou commanded, and yet there is room. And if there's plenty of room, anybody else wants to be baptized, and we're excited about people getting baptized. Hey, listen, I was told, I'm going to really, I never do this for baptism, uh, people that get baptized. But I was told by Brother Bob that Zeppelin prayed every chapel service. He opened in prayer and he closed in prayer. Lord, I pray that uh, every uh, service will be like this. And uh, Lord, I thank you that I got baptized tonight. And I thank you that I am here right now and everyone else is. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Amen, you are dismissed. Amen.